All right, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm making a video about something that's completely fundamental to Salesforce, and this is creating a custom object. Now, we're gonna go through creating a custom object, how to make the object itself. Um, we're gonna go through how to build out that custom object um, with fields, how to track history of fields. We're gonna go through how to, let's see, make it usable, that is, uh, make list views and page layouts. Uh, also make sure that it appears on the page layouts of any related objects. And last but not least, we're gonna see how to integrate it. So using Apex code, how to create one, using a SQL query, how to extract information about that object, or using the REST API, also how to create a record. So we're gonna go through the whole gamut of custom objects today. Uh, should be a little bit longer video, but I'm gonna put little titles for the sections. Uh, so hopefully that helps you if you need just to learn something specific to be able to skip through the video to figure out uh, how to do whatever it is that you're trying to do with custom objects. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, we're just going to go ahead and log into Salesforce. All right, so once I'm inside of Salesforce, I want to create a custom object, so I'm going to search for objects. And here's my little interface where I can create a new object. So I'll click New Custom Object, and I'll give it a label. So the object I'm going to make are invoices, um, and I'm going to relate them to my opportunity object for the opportunities that are closed one. So I'll put a description so that I know that. Um, and now I want to set up the name. So an invoice is something that I'm going to probably automatically generate. So I want to use an auto number. And I just need to define sort of a display format. So I'll make the first three letters INV. And then I'll automatically generate a number starting with one. So that'll be my name. Now the optional features are pretty important here. I definitely want to be able to report on invoices. And I definitely want to be able to track the field history uh, I don't need activities, and I probably don't need it in chatter groups. So I'll leave those two options there, and now I need to choose about my deployment status. So since I'm still developing this object, I don't want to make it available for my users. I'll keep it in development. And I'm just going to check this box that says Launch New Custom Tab Wizard after saving this object, because obviously I want to create a tab to see invoices within my configuration. So uh, I'm going to fast forward through this because I always spend way too much time. I look through every single one and try and choose one. Um, just pick an icon for your tab. It really doesn't matter. I'll pick the stack of cash because invoices. I'll click Next. And I want to choose who can see this tab by default. So I'm going to turn it off for everybody. And then I'm just going to turn it on for standard users and system administrators. All right, so there we go. I'll click Next. And again, I just want to include this tab in probably Sales and Service and then also the Sales and Service console. And I'll append this tab to the personal customizations of each user. So there we go. We've created it, and you can see the tab right there. All right, so now let's create some custom fields. I'll scroll down. I'll click New on my custom fields. and. Uh, we'll go through one of these, and then I'll fast forward through the rest. Um, I'm going to create a payment date field. So obviously, that's a date field. And I'll give it a label. Um, and we'll just go through and go next. I'll make sure that it's visible to the various users that need to be able to use it. Go through and go to next. And I'll make sure it just shows up on our layout, our invoice layout. OK, so anyways. As I said, I'm going to try and fast forward through these. I'm going to create a bunch of different fields. Um, the status of the pick list, for example, is going to be uh, the status pick list is going to be a field that will store the status of that invoice. And I'm also going to create an invoice type that can be either incoming or outgoing because maybe we need to issue back some money. I don't know. For This is just an example. I'll make an amount, obviously, because every invoice has a dollar amount attached to it. And I think last but not least, I'm going to make a lookup relationship or a master detail relationship. Now, um, I'll explain the difference between these in the related blog post, but I'm going to actually create a master detail relationship because invoices are sort of intrinsically related to the opportunities that are issued with them. They're not two standalone objects that we want to relate. They're actually intrinsically related. Uh, and I also want to allow reparenting of this object. So what that means is that if I change the opportunity, for some reason I need to generate a new opportunity and delete the old one, I can migrate over those existing invoices. All right, 
So by default, it's going to add a related list to the opportunities uh, that says invoices by default. So I'll save that, and that looks good. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to set up my history tracking. So these are the fields that I want to have a record of every time they change. So I want to choose the opportunity, the status, and the payment date, because those are the fields that theoretically are going to change, and I want to know when, uh, where, why, and how they changed. All right, so now let's make this usable. We're going to create a list view for our users to be able to see those invoices. So I'm actually going to filter this. Let's say type is equal to incoming. So we just want a list view of the incoming invoices, for example. Let me give this a more descriptive name then, incoming invoices. And here I can come and select the various fields that are going to show up as columns in my list. And I can go ahead and sort of rearrange these in a way that makes sense to me or that I think would be most useful to my users. I'm going to make it visible to everybody, and I'm going to save it. All right, so there is my list view. Now let's make an invoice to see what it looks like in our list view. We'll give it a date, um, a status and a type. It has a default. We'll give it an amount, and we will relate it to an opportunity. All right, so we'll save that. And this is our page layout, and this is our list view. Now, I didn't really like that page layout. As you can see, it's all one column. So let's go ahead and edit that. I'll click Edit Layout there at the top right. And what I can do is I can move these different fields around. So I obviously have two columns available, and I'm going to segregate those different field values into two columns and sort of group them in a way that makes sense to me or that makes sense to my users. So I'll put type, amount, and payment date in one section. And then I want to add a related list for the invoice history. So we're tracking the field history, so we'll have records of when things actually changed. So I'll add the history there, and I'll go ahead and save. And there we go. Now it looks a lot better to me. Now if I change a field and save, oh, I'll see it shows up in my history there. So that's really awesome. The custom object looks good. It has the fields I want. It has the appearance I want. It has the related list I want. Um, and just to give you another example, if I change the payment date there, I'll see another record in my invoice history. And all right, so the invoice looks really good. Let's just make sure that it looks good on an opportunity. So I'll open up my opportunity, and here's my invoices related list. Well, that related list kind of sucks because it just has the name. So I'm going to edit the layout of the opportunity, and I'm going to click the little, the little wrench icon on that invoices related list. Now this will give me the opportunity to, again, choose which fields I want to show up as columns, rearrange them, and sort them actually. So I'm going to sort them by the created date uh, descending so that I can see the newest invoice first. And we'll save that. It'll give me a little preview. That looks good. And I'll save it. And now we should be able to see more information about the invoice. There we go. So that invoice we created is related to this opportunity. We can see all those columns. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to be able to integrate it into, let's say, our different Apex classes or REST callouts, things like that. So I'm going to open up my developer console. And the first thing we'll do is we'll create a query because I want to show you guys how we'll query this using Sockwall. So I'll write select ID name, payment date from invoice, and I'll execute that. And you can see it return me those three rows and the one object. Now let's add a condition, let's say where type is equal to incoming. And there we go, it returns me that list too. So you can imagine how we can make further SQL queries uh, and embed those within our Apex code. Now I want to show you how to create an object actually using Apex. So let's open up our execute anonymous window and I'll create a new invoice object. And now I just need to fill it with some data. So I'll say the payment date is equal to today. And I'll say the status is sent. I'll say the type is incoming. And I'll give it an amount. So as you can see, I just list the fields in there and give them values. Now I'm going to try and insert that new invoice. And if there's an error, I'm going to catch the exception and I'm going to debug it. All right, so let's try and execute this code and let's see if it works out for us. So it's going to open up a log and if I check debug, I'll see, actually I have an error. So it looks like I'm missing a required field, I'm missing an opportunity. So I didn't relate it to an opportunity. 
All right, so let's go grab an opportunity ID and let's put it in as opportunity double underscore C within our code. Now let's execute that again. And if I go to debug and I see nothing, there we go, that means there were no errors. So now if I go back to my query panel and I query again, I see those two records instead of just one. So we successfully inserted one record using Apex code. Obviously you could use the same Apex code within a class. So I'm gonna open up a workbench and if you don't know what Workbench is, I have a couple other videos explaining uh, what Workbench is and what it's useful for. But I'm going to open the REST Explorer because what I want to show you guys is that for every new custom object and S object that's created and that lives in Salesforce, there's a REST API. So I'm going to open up a REST endpoint for S objects and I'm going to go and find invoice. And within invoice, I have a little folder called URLs. And that last URL on their S object is the URL that I'll need to hit with a post request to actually create an instance of our invoice object, a record that is. So I just need to create a request body and it's going to be a JSON object and each key is going to be the API name of a field and each value is going to be the value I want to put into that field. So obviously I put payment date, status, type, amount, opportunity, and now I'm just going to fill out those values. So the day will be today. I'll make it sent as the status. The type will be outgoing. The amount will be 250. And I'll paste that opportunity in there. All right, so there's my object. And now I'm going to send it to that endpoint. And there were no errors. The success was true. And it passes me back an ID, which is actually an ID of the invoice that was created. So if I visit that ID, I see our new invoice within the system. All right, so there it is. Everything you ever wanted to know about custom objects in Salesforce. Hopefully this video was useful to you guys. I make new videos every single week. So if this was useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, have a great week and I'll see you in the next video.